Hey guys, it's Stacy from Art on the Rocks with Gear, and I just wanted to jump on today and do a little video that had some spring vibes. My grandmother was an artist, and she dabbled in a lot of watercolor, and I was looking at a couple of her paintings that I have, and I was like, I want to do some watercolor flowers on some ceramics. So you don't have to know how to paint. I'm going to show you some really easy ways to achieve this look flash to the finished product. Maybe I just add my own editing things. So I'm going to do a daffodil plate, uh, but I'm going to show you how you can do this with any flower. So no drawing skills needed. You need a printer or a coloring book. So I printed out a few different flowers. We've got a Van Gogh iris. You could go it's so cold my fingers don't want to work tulips you could go sunflower daisy thing whatever flower you want this concept will work for all of them so i drew mine out on the project that i'm going to paint with you guys today but if you're like stacy i can't draw print one out scribble with pencil all over the back fill it up and then make sure it fits on your space and if you hold it down, I'm gonna do this upright. You can just trace over that and give yourself a pattern. I'm not gonna do this whole thing, but I'll trace over some of it so you can see how it works. That noise helps when tracing. And tracing upside down and in the air is really effective. All right, so when we peel that off, we should have a little transfer. It's super, uh, this is super light. I don't know if you can see it there, but I can see it. If you can't see it, you can always just rub a little more pencil on the back. Let me make this a little darker for you somewhere so you can see it well. And we're just gonna trace over that. And get off. There we go. There we go. And you get a nice faint line. You can start to see that coming out. So if you're not into drawing, that's a really easy option to lay out your design. So option one. Option two, you can just draw it. So I have gone ahead and drawn mine out. So I'm doing this triple platter and I'm doing kind of the transition from bulb to budding to full blossom of a daffodil. So I've kind of laid out our flowers and then I've given myself kind of a crazy little edge that you saw on the sample plate of where I'm gonna lay out some of my watercolor, just loosely, those kind of little scribbles on the edge. Just kind of keep me in check and remind me, stay on the outskirts. So I'm gonna zoom in and readjust the camera so you guys can see what I'm working on. And we'll talk a little bit about watercolor flowers. All right, so I'm using a variety of colors. You can use whatever you want. Uh, first up, I'm gonna grab some smiley face yellow, good spring option. This is weird, you guys can, we're gonna, we're gonna make it so you can see me again for a minute. All right. How low can you go? Um, so I'm gonna use some smiley face. The cool thing about these projects when you're doing watercolor, use the tiniest bit of glaze. So that's probably more than enough for this whole thing. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit of old yeller. I need a chair. Uh, and I'm gonna start with my orange peel as well. It's like squats day. All right, so I, when I'm doing a watercolor, let some of the white shine through. That's kind of what's nice about 
watercolor because you wouldn't add white spots like you would in an acrylic painting or an oil painting. You let the white of the canvas, or in this case, the platter, shine through. So you want to leave some of those empty spaces. So I'm going to start off just by using kind of a medium sized brush. It's not real, real big. And I'm going to get a whole bunch of water into this light yellow, my smiley face. And I'm gonna just pull away a little bit of glaze at a time. And water, 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 water. I'm gonna add a whole bunch. I, you know what, I wish I had an eyedropper. Just like, all right. So I'm really watering it out. So I'm gonna start off with this little bulb here. So again, really watered down. And I just like to kind of, it's nice to have a reference if you have a picture of your colored finished flower, but I'm just gonna pick some spaces where I want some yellow. And I'm kind of dabbing and lifting, you know, your three coats rule doesn't apply here because we're gonna clear glaze this anyways. So now I've got all these pencil guides, which is nice. And you can see some of that white popping through. And these pencil lines will just burn off in the kiln. So I'm gonna add a little touch of some yellow to this stem. I'm gonna get some pops of yellow here or there. This bulb down here is gonna be a couple shades of brown. Uh, I'm gonna work with just my yellow for now. So I'm gonna go in. That's it for that guy. Just some yellow. Left some white shining through. I'm gonna go into this one here and add some of my yellow. Just, I didn't ask you anything, Alexa. I don't know what just happened. Alexa's gone awry. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm leaving some in here and I'm just kind of dabbing and letting it almost drip onto the piece. Going around to all my petals where I know I want some of that yellow first. And again, letting some of that white negative empty space shine through. Cue the fast forward. And speed paint. You can watch it real fast. Just dabbing it on. If you escape your line a little bit, that's okay. They're a guide. And sometimes I might go back and layer that yellow up a little bit more in another spot. So I'm getting a lighter and a brighter version of this. All right, we're gonna zoom in, ready? Whoop. We've got some yellow. You can see where some of that's a little more translucent than others and are bald. All right, so I'm gonna take that same dirty brush. I don't even bother washing it. And guys, look how much glaze I've used. Like nothing has even left that pile. We're gonna grab some old yeller and just start to add some dark spaces. I even hitting some of this, that's cool. Let them mix a little. Really watered down though. Do, 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 do. Look at how drippy it is. There you go, real watered. And we're gonna go in and add some bits of old yeller. Just touching here or there, kind of dripping and dabbing it on. So you can see that up close. All right. I like to kind of highlight some of the edges just so it separates each, each petal a little bit. But really once that pattern on is on, it's just like a little coloring book. Have fun, relax. Let the mixing just happen. Let 
little bit of yellow everywhere. All right, so I'm going to continue on. I'm still using a nice small brush. Not my teeniest. I have another one. And I'm going to go in and water down some oranges now. Really adding a lot of water. And I just want some orange for my darkest spots. So right around the inside of this flower, there's this little curly cue. I'm just dabbing it in. Right around the edges. I'm going to add a little shadow where the base of my petals are. I can even use a clean brush with just a little bit of water to help merge some of those colors together and blend a little. Just a very light touch. A little up close you can see that orange on the edge very lightly but it's going to give me some variation in my petals. Alright, my table's really tall and my chair's really short but I wanted to back you guys up for a second and show you kind of the full picture of how I do my border. It, I really love this border because it's just very natural and you literally just let the paint drip. Sometimes I layer it a little more, sometimes I leave it alone. Um, so I'm going to, you could do any color. I'm gonna bring a little blue vibes in there and we're gonna use Jumping Juniper. So you can still see all this glaze on my plate. We literally use like for this whole project, I'll use less than an ounce. So I'm just going to squeeze out a little blob of Jumpin' Juniper. And I'm going to switch to a bigger brush because I want some drippage. So we're just going to add in some water. And I've gone ahead and already kind of sketched out an idea of where my lines are going to remain down there. And I'm just going to let the paint do the work. So I'm literally with a very drippy brush. I'm just kind of touching it, letting it drip down over the edges a bit. Sometimes I'm layering it, sometimes I'm not. So I'm going to zoom you in in a second. I just want to get a little bit on here. If something starts to drip more than you want it to, emergency! You can stop it by just touching it with a little paper towel. I like to let some of the running and dripping happen, let gravity do some of the work. All right, yeah, see, I've got this angled edge platter, so that drip went woo! So if you rip off a couple little pieces of paper towel to have handy, you can stop it before it goes in if that's too much for you. I like things to be a little extra, so I'm okay with it. So really watering down. You can see it's like very fluid on my plate. Oh, let it happen. I want to stop you. You can get a cool texture from these paper towels too. And I'm just using that as a general guide. I might escape outside of my line that I already drew in here. Soak it up, stop it. I can tilt this, I'll tilt it towards you guys. So gravity makes it go the other way too. But I like where you just kind of let it overlap and touch. I'm just dabbing it on. I might go onto this rim a little, but I'm going to do kind of a blue base and then I'm going to bring some of my yellow, maybe even a little lime ricky into the top. There it is up close. Don't be afraid of the splatter on your platter. 
I cracked myself up. All right. So letting that white shine through, embrace the negative space when you're doing watercolor. And a little drippy. And I'm bringing it up about halfway. I'm going to stop there because I wanted a different color on my top. And then I think I'll do the lime in between. So I'll do mostly yellow on top. And then I'll do lime in between uh, for where they meet. Kind of like they're fading together because blue and yellow make green. And I might use a little more concentrated jumping juniper and do a little splat in action. Look at how pretty that watercolor is. I love it. And you use such little product. All right, I get carried away with this. Slow it down. Slow it down. But I like that drippy business in there. All right, so I'm going to rinse this off. Get that extra jumping juniper out of there. And I'm going to go back to my smiley face yellow. Really pulling away some glaze and adding that water. I don't even think we're using a half ounce for this project. I got some more colors to use though. All right, so same idea. I'm gonna flip it around so gravity does not fight me. And I'm gonna pop in some of that yellow. Letting it touch, letting it overlap. Letting all the things happen. All right. Leaving some of that white though. I want that to happen. But I can even watch this. We'll get a little speckly down here and let some of that yellow speck travel into the blue space. See them floating around down there? All right. I'm going to keep watering down. I like the flex in the splatter because it's kind of like a fun vibe on a little more of a traditional um, object. You know, this very delicate watercolor and then some crazy. So I'm going to rinse one more time. I'm probably going to rinse more than one more time. I'm going to rinse again. And we're going to do a little lime Ricky. Give that a little shake. Just a tiny bit, literally the size of a pea. Whoop. Yellow just ran into it. I'm okay with that. And I'm going to use some water. Let some of my yellow drip in there. And where these two colors meet, we're gonna do a little lime action. So I'm gonna let some of that lime come into the blue and up into the yellow. And just on either side where the two meet. That's a design choice, that's up to you. And maybe a little flicky flick, 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 flick. Just smack my brush a little bit. I'm gonna give you guys a close up of that. So you can see all that little speckle. Some of it escaped out here. I'm okay with that. I just let that happen. All right. This is some smudginess from my drying. I just smudge it off a little with a paper towel and all that's gonna burn off in the kiln. All right, so I've got most of my flowers done and my border. I'm gonna zoom you in and we're gonna do some details. I'm gonna use a nice fine liner brush. Take the lid off, look at that. Such fine chip. All right, a little bit of water and I'm gonna get some happy trails. Just a dab. And a little mochaccino for the bulb part of my daffodil. Again, just a dab. I still don't think we're at an ounce yet. Uh, I've got some old yellow on there, which I want. And I'm going to add a little bit of Black Lab. Ooh, 
or a whole bunch. All right, so we're gonna get some color onto our bulb. Nice and watered down still. When in doubt, pinky out. <clears throat> and maybe a little watered down green. We got a little hint of flowers don't get ripe. I was going to say ripeness. Some spring growth. Get some stem work in here. So I'm going to use my Lime Ricky. And same thing I did with the flowers. I'm going to start off with some of my light greens and then we'll go back in and add some darks. For a little bit of dark green, I'm going to add some green acres. Again, just a little drippy drop. And that fine brush again. Some water. I'm letting it run into my lime and really watering it down. So I've got most of my colors laid in. I wanna go in with a few more shadows. So you can see I just took old yellow and did a little on the edge there. And I'm gonna go in and do those in a few spaces just to add some depth. Last detail, I'm gonna take some of my blue and a little bit of black to get a nice slate blue and I don't want it stark stark black so that's why I'm adding a little bit of blue and using this tiny guy I'm gonna go in and just here or there I'm gonna find a few places that I want to add a even darker shadow see and I always like to kind of check out that border one more time I think I might go in one more and add a little watered down old yeller just for a little more depth so I'm gonna spin it around so I'm not fighting gravity just on the outskirts here or there I'm gonna dab in a little old yeller real watered down This is a little crazy, you might not like this, but I'm gonna do a little flicking for some texture. I'm decorating my face with this as we speak. All right, try again. There we go, that's semi-normal. All right, so this is what we got. Again, you could do this with any flower. That pencil and that smudginess will go away. And we'll have this really kind of pretty delicate uh, I'm calling this piece Metamorphosis of Spring, uh, piece that you can put out for Easter with a little sophisticated flair. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.